what's going on. <coughs> so, how do you find happiness? So somebody asked me this question uh, two days ago, and you know, I've been doing some thinking. It's always dangerous when I do that. And so basically what I've been thinking is along the lines of what makes me happy, what has eventually made me happy in my life. See, when I was a teenager, it was harder to find happiness day to day. Um, and most people assume that their long-term goals, even if they don't work towards them, just how they assume their life to go in the future, they assume that that's what happiness will be for them, is getting those things. And now I say getting, I don't say achieving, because achieving it, you actually have to have a plan and be working towards it on a daily um, occurrence, you know? You have to be very conscious every day, every morning, every night about what your goals are and what it's going to take the next day to take one small step forward to reaching those long-term goals. And so most people assume they're going to get what they envision for themselves. Now, that's not the case. You have to achieve those things. And even if you do, should you achieve them, it's not really going to make you happy, right? Because happiness is not a you know, one goal and then you're done type of a thing. It's a day, it's a every single day. So you can have days where you're mad, days where you're happy, days where you're sad. And the ultimate goal is to figure out how you can make yourself happy, how you can stay optimistic. You know, one of the biggest things that for me will make me have a successful and feel like there's many opportunities in a day that I can try to take advantage of is counting the things that I'm thankful for in the morning while I'm showering or in the shower and just implementing it somewhere in my morning, listing off things that I could potentially not have that I do have. And it's a blessing to have those. And so that every day is a big thing that will make me feel a certain way about my day all the way till the end. And it's a daily thing. And so basically, um, one of the key instruments in having continual happiness or tools is self-discipline. Okay. And self-discipline comes, it stems off of not discipline in a negative light from growing up with your parents, having that sort of discipline. But as a child, when you're disciplined, you're able to, it makes you have to restrain yourself from doing things or following rules than if, if you don't have a parent who does discipline you. And so what'll happen later on in life as you become a teenager and an adult is it will make it easier to discipline yourself because you've had the discipline when you were growing up. See, some people who don't have any form of discipline or proper parenting maybe, I don't know if that's the right term, um, it'll be even harder for them to take discipline and make themselves do it because at that point it's a full circle sort of a discipline. The reason that I say self-discipline is because self-discipline leads to achieving things or um, being able to get what you want in kind of a controlled manner. It, it ultimately leads to self-worth. You know, um, being able to discipline yourself will make you feel the achievement and self-worth, like you, like your worth, like what your value is when you can actually make yourself do something. And your self-worth is directly tied to your self-esteem. So your self-esteem is essentially how you feel about who you are in the reality context. So the ego is like, if you're familiar, I'm going to use a little bit of mechanical knowledge. If you're familiar with automatic transmissions or manual transmissions or whatever, the ego is like the interface or the clutch plate or, or some sort of a cushion barrier between yourself, your consciousness, what, what you're conscious about yourself with that you, you're aware of, the ego is in between that and what the real, perceived reality is. And so you say, your ego says, and not in a negative light ego, um, just in a self-awareness sort of an ego, is I walk this way, I listen to country type of music, I drive a pickup truck, this is who I am, this is what I'm attached to of, of my being. And so, it's important to have a good value of self-esteem or self-worth. And ultimately it comes down to 
what you value being able to achieve it or, or in essence, because it is a day-to-day thing, to be able to find inner peace, right? So there's a couple different, a couple different things to it. Those are two things that I had the, the thought on that I have um, been asked that question. And so, you know, I've just been thinking about that the last couple days and I feel like self-worth, ego, self-esteem, but every single day being thankful for things that I could potentially not have, okay? And that's what will bring happiness in the present because like a lot of other like uh, North American cultures, certain languages don't have a word for the future and the past because they can't be experienced. The only thing that can be experienced is the present, okay? The future and the past is only relevant when modern man created a clock, when we came up with time. There's a future and a past, um, but other than that, there, there's really, they're, they're intangible, they're not real. There's only the present now. So if you're constantly chasing that future, that um, hope of the future and being happy, You'll never truly be happy because there's only the present moment. So it's finding peace in the present moment and self-love, self-worth, and tr- maintaining to try to achieve your, your goals and things that you want, but not in a way that will make you less happy in, in the now. So anyways, I hope that helps, guys. Peace.